Hi guys, so I'm going to be talking about uh, Sir Winston Churchill, um, the Sir and his name thanks to his knighthood. Uh, he's a man who's famous mostly for being Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, particularly during World War II. Um, he dealt with a lot of tough situations and handled them exceptionally well. So this is just going to look at his bit of a biography and uh, some of his character virtues as well. So Winston Churchill was born on the 30th of November 1874 in the county of Oxfordshire in England, um, which is actually the neighbouring county to where I was born. Now, uh, Oxfordshire is a fairly posh area, you would say. Uh, the people that live there are, are quite well off. Um, Winston's family, were, we already know, were quite well off. His father, Lord Randolph Churchill, uh, is, is a well-known politician. He was actually a member of, of the parliament um, before Winston was even born. And his mother, Jenny Jerome, she's actually American. So she was a, you know, a socialite from America. She was quite, quite popular um, back in the States. And uh, so that was an, you know, an early connection between Winston Churchill and the US, um, just purely from his mother's side. Um, like I said, with Oxfordshire, Oxfordshire is, uh, you know, quite a well-off area. So he was, he was raised, uh, we would say proper, um, in England, uh, with, um, Oxford being the, the location of the university. Most people have heard of Oxford University, uh, Oxford and Cambridge being the big two universities in England. So kind of like a Harvard area. Now he graduated from the Royal Military College in 1884. Uh, in a quite a high-ranked officer position. Uh, that photo you can see there is actually him from his graduation ceremony. Um, now, a big part of Winston's life and what shaped him as a person was the loss of his father. Now, his father was only 45 years old, which was, um, you know, a very, quite a young death even even back then. Um, and Winston Churchill was only 20 years old, so. This had him thinking, uh, had him, he, he says it in his autobiography plenty of times, that he really wanted to push on and achieve as much as he could in his life as quickly as possible. And a lot of that's attributed to his father's early death. In terms of his career, uh, on the right here we can see a, a young Winston Churchill uh, when he first entered politics. He was invited to, to get into it and uh, campaign for Parliament by, uh, by another politician, Robert Ascroft, back in 1899. He impressed Ascroft, uh, much of the political world and most of Great Britain with his uh, campaign, although he did lose that election. The following year, he actually did win a seat in the House of Commons. Now, um, for those of you that don't know much about British politics, I guess that's kind of like being within the Senate um, in the US. So he was actually part of that in 1900. Now, due to a fallout within his Conservative Party, he actually then switched to the Liberal Party and in terms of how big a deal that is, that that's like you know Donald Trump leaving the Republicans. It's 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 a big deal at that point. Um, 1908 saw him marry his wife Clementine Hosier. Uh, they would go on to have five kids. The children themselves were actually quite successful as well in their lives, and I guess it helps being raised with the silver spoon. Now we start to talk about Prime Minister Churchill, and the photo you see here is more what people associate with Winston. Um, as you know, this is what he's mostly known for. So in 1940, um, the Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain resigned. Um, Winston Churchill stepped straight into this role as he was the man below him. Now, it was a difficult time for Britain and for Europe and most of the world, uh, as the Germans had just invaded France. And, uh, you know, it, it was a big deal. And, and the big thing was finding out what Don, um, Donald, what Winston Churchill was going to do next. And he actually refused an armistice with the German Nazi party. Um, so basically, he did not want to bow down to the Germans. And he said, you know, we're going to fight you. Now, this resulted in the Battle of Britain, which was where the Germans would run bombing raids over, over the UK, over London. And this went on for years. Um, Many people were scared that at some point the uh, the Nazis, the Germans, that they were going to invade, but that did not happen. He became a good friend with President Roosevelt, actually, with the United States. Uh, he came over to the White House in 1941, spent three weeks with him. Um, this was a big part of the U.S. getting involved with the war, was the uh, allegiance between the two leaders. Um, following on from the war, obviously, we know that went quite well for, for both nations. Um, 
Churchill, along with Roosevelt and Stalin, they attended the Yalta Conference, which where basically they looked at what post-war Europe would look like and, and much of the world. And one of the big issues was communism. And, and during that, we saw the split of Germany into East and West. Um, following the war, despite all of his success, Churchill was actually replaced as prime minister in 1945. Uh, and that was by a vote. He wasn't he wasn't stepping down. He, he lost the election. And uh, I feel a lot of people were just looking for a change following a tough time for the country. Now, so Winston Churchill is much more than a politician. Uh, many people don't know he did win a Nobel Prize for Literature in 1953. He's authored over 50 books, and uh, the most famous of those was his six-set volume about World War II, where he looked in, in depth about things that had gone on, and we saw a good behind-the-scenes look coming from a man who played an integral role in that. He's given multiple speeches at universities all over the United States, the UK, and around the world. Uh, one of the famous ones was in Missouri, and that was actually the Iron Curtain speech which we'll uh, touch on again later. Um, he would go on to serve another term as Prime Minister uh, between 51 and 55. Um, the reason he stepped down eventually was because he suffered his second stroke in just under a year. Um, and this was as he was starting to uh, you know, become a little older and his body was starting to break down, M much, much attributed to the stress of the war and uh, the things he was uh, put in charge of. Uh, 90 years old he was when he passed away, so he doubled his father's life and uh, he achieved much of what he set out to achieve. Um, he passed away in London, uh, not far from his birthplace of Oxfordshire, and uh, his, his funeral was actually the largest state funeral in history. So just to show you how much appreciation the people had for, for Mr. Churchill. Now in terms of virtues, he, he displayed truthfulness. All of the time. Now, he said things during the war to, to hundreds of millions of people that, that were just hard to say, hard to bear. And, uh, you know, he, he, he dealt with them well and uh, helped them get through the war. Now, uh, the Iron Curtain speech, like I spoke about earlier, was was describing the the uh, communism sweeping across Europe. Uh, he actually spoke about this in the United States at a university. And uh, that speech is one of the most famous speeches uh, of modern history. In terms of his practical wisdom, uh, he looked a lot at technical innovation. He looked at how, um, you know, potential things that were being made during the war, like, you know, the at uh, atomic bombs were so destructive. So he was more looking at ways that you could control this uh, advancement in technology and, and how we could create things to benefit society in the long run. And, and finally, justice was huge, um, especially during those times in Great Britain and Europe. It was a tough time to say what was right, what was wrong. Uh, who was saying the right things and I felt like he dealt with these things fantastically well and got people through times that many could not envisage, envisage uh, ending. Fallibility, um, he had a very successful career and, and uh, most people who have been as successful as Winston Churchill, um, you can't pull out things that they've done wrong but he does have one huge defeat within his career and that was to do with the Anglo-Ottoman uh, relationship. So we're looking at Turkey and Great Britain mainly um, now, prior to World War One, these talks broke down between Churchill and and the uh, Turkish government, and uh, it actually led to the Turks fighting with the Nazis in the Second World War. Um, the Gallipoli campaign is what it's most known for, and, and that was basically where the majority of the fighters were uh, Anzacs, Australian, New Zealand, uh, along with some Canadians and a few Brits, and uh, for months they tried to invade Turkey via the Dardanelles, um, but that ultimately failed. They lost hundreds of thousands of men. Uh, and the, the the attempt to start a new front failed. So that, that was his big, big moment of fallibility. In terms of personal connection, he's I was already had some sort of connection just through, I guess, sheer patriotism. Um, but the man himself is a, is a phenomenal leader. And it's uh, something I would like to become myself, maybe not quite on his scale, but but the qualities and the characteristics he displayed were, were fantastic. Uh, he has an extreme ability to stay calm under pressure. Um, this is particularly evident during his speeches, uh, the, the Iron Curtain again being one of them. And, and during World War II, the things he was saying, um, we, we pull things apart of what the President of the United States, for example, says in press conferences. The pressure is there for him, yes, but the pressure of a potential invasion into your homeland uh, was phenomenal and uh, he, he dealt with them extremely well. Uh, he's a great motivator. He motivated Britain to get through the Battle of Britain, basically. This was just the people under constant bombardment from the Nazis, from the Luftwaffe. And, um, you know, he, he was that 
that voice that they heard on the radio that helped them get through it. Uh, and, and also the thing I like was his commitment to achieve, achieve as much as he could in his life. Uh, like we said, his father died early. He said, look, I want, I want to achieve as much as I can. Um, and, you know, he, he achieved all of that and more and lived till 90. So that's fantastic. And that's something that I would like to emulate. And we move on to our sources. So, yeah, but Winston Churchill is, is a man who um, is well known throughout the world. And hopefully I can I can emulate some of his characteristics.